Um, first of all, um, thanks for the invitation, of course, which I of course appreciate, and thanks for everybody who's uh, following. And um, I'll be talking about this topic, isolation of graphs, which is basically, as you will see, um, um, is the generalization of domination. Um, well, a while ago, I used to say it's probably going to explode, you know, um, uh, uh, I guess we can actually say now this is happening. Um, so before I start, um, I'm still getting used to, I, we actually used to use Zoom as well a lot, but um, I'm just trying to share yeah, the full screen. Um, hopefully this will work now. I guess you should be seeing the full screen now, yeah. right, of yeah. my presentation. Yes, it's okay, yes. Brilliant, brilliant, thank you. Okay, um, so. Um, um, all right, um, so some basic definitions here, um, which, you know, you're familiar with. Um, so standard notation, okay, for uh, any vertex, V of the graph, we denote by an of V, the set, we use an of V to denote the set of neighbors of V in the graph G, um, and square brackets V as usual denotes the close neighborhood. So in other words, all the neighbors are but V included as well. And, uh, and then the of V denotes the degree of V, okay, the number of neighbors of V. And uh, then for any subset of the vertex set, then square bracket S uh, denotes the union of the close neighborhoods, of the vertices in S, okay? Um, and uh, so this is called the closed neighborhood of the set S. Um, and uh, G minus S, of course, denotes the graph obtained by removing uh, the vertices in S from G, okay? deleting the vertices in S from G. Um, and it is to be assumed so that I don't sort of, you know, repeat every time that, Repeat that G is a connected and vertex graph, okay? Um, in most cases, unless I specify otherwise, G will be a connected graph and then will be the number of vertices. And, uh, okay, now this is the main definition. Um, so, okay, the, the definition of an F isolating set of G and therefore the F isolation number. So if curly F is a set of graphs and H is a copy of some graph in this set curly F, okay, uh, then we call H an F graph. So for example, if F consists of say K2, okay, the complete graph on two vertices and C5, for example, okay, then any clique of size two, and any five cycle is called an F graph, okay? If, if, so if, if F is the set K2 and C5, then any clique of size two and any five cycle, okay, is an F graph. Um, and the uh, next definition, so a subset D of the vertex set of G is called an F isolating set of G. If the closed neighborhood of D intersects the vertex sets of the F graphs contained by G, okay? So think of all the F graphs present in G, okay? Those that are subgraphs of G. And D, a set of, okay, consisting of some of the vertices of G, is an F isolating set of G if its close neighborhood, okay, intersects the vertex sets, okay, of these F graphs present in G, contained by G. So we, we used to give this, present this definition another way. We used to say F isolating if G with the closed neighborhood of the removed, okay, the, this graph, the graph obtained by removing the closed neighborhood of D from G contains no F graph, but this is the same as what I've just specified, okay? So in other words, according to this definition here of an F isolating set, um, well, D is an F isolating set of G if and only if G minus N of D contains no F graph. So in other words, you would have, by removing the close neighborhood, you would have destroyed all the F graphs 
present in G. These two things are the same, okay? Um, G minus N of D contains no epigraph and D is in a Pfizer writing set in this uh, in this way, okay, that the close neighborhood intersects all the epigraphs, they are the same, they are the same thing. Um, so, and this is very easy to see. And uh, it's immediate. So, now, this size of a smallest F isolating set of G is denoted by this symbol, okay, iota, which we call iota, Greek symbol, G, comma, curly F. Okay, and it's called the F isolation number of G. So, of course, as usual, of course, it makes sense to take, try and find the size of a smallest one, because if you, if you take the, the whole vertex set, for example, it's automatically F isolating. Um, but, okay, for such a thing, the obvious thing to consider is the size of a smallest F isolating set. And that size is denoted by iota GF. It's called the F isolation number of G. Now, when F, curly F, okay, is a set consisting of one graph only, say, for example, F is, okay, consists of K5 only, for example. Um, in that case, instead of writing, okay, so F is a set, therefore, you would have the set of consisting of this particular graph, capital F, say, for example, F is K5. Okay, instead of writing the brackets there, we can just omit those and just write iota G the graph under consideration only. So for example, iota GK5, if it's just K5. Right. Um, next. And of course, the problem is, as I said, okay, given a graph G and a set F of graphs, how small can an F isolating set of G be? Now, this problem was introduced by Caro and Hansberg fairly recently, okay, 2017, and it's a natural generalization of the classical domination problem. Well, why? And um, well, I'm going to explain. Now, what is a dominating set? We all know what this is a workshop on domination. Uh, by the way, very interesting talks. Okay, I mean, um, uh, it, was, um, it was nice to, it was a good thing to follow. Um, and uh, so, but just a quick reminder. Okay, so we say D is a dominating set of G if each vertex of the graph is either in D itself, well, is in D or has a neighbor in D. Okay, so every vertex is at most one step away from some vertex um, um, in D. Well, in other words, what we're saying here is that the closed neighborhood of D is the whole vertex set. Okay, so I mean, the vertices in D and their neighbors uh, form the whole vertex set, in fact. And now, the size of a smallest dominating set of G is denoted by gamma of G, as you know, you know, I mean, and then this is called the domination number of G. And uh, the first observation is precisely, this is why isolation is a generalization of domination, because um, we obviously have here that this is a dominating set of G, and only if this is a K1 isolating set of G. Um, okay, this is very easy to see. Again, I, I mean, if it's dominating, Right, um, then the close neighborhood is, is the whole vertex set, and therefore this means that um, it covers all the K ones present in G, the close neighborhood. Okay, in in sort of hits all, all the vertices, and therefore hits all the K ones. If you remove the close neighborhood from the graph, you're left with nothing. In other words, not even a K one survives, and therefore it's a K one isolating set. And similarly, if you have a K1 isolating set, what does that mean, okay? If this is a K1 isolating set, then the closed neighborhood hits, intersects, in other words, contains, therefore, all, all the K1s. Well, hits all the K1s. Um, and therefore, um, if it hits all the K1s, when you remove the closed neighborhood, again, you're left with nothing, with no vertex at all. And therefore, what you have is, in fact, a dominating set, okay? Um, you're capturing all the K ones and therefore all the vertices. So dominating set is K is a K1 isolating set and vice versa. And therefore the domination number is simply the K1 isolation number, okay? Iota G K1. So what we're doing now when we're doing F isolation rather than and in fact, Caro, Yair Caro and Adriana Hansberg, um they they also so they introduced this term isolation sort of isolation, think of the graphs you want to destroy in, in your given graph G, okay? The, 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 the graph formations there uh, contained by G, um, you want to destroy this particular set F of graphs, um, copies of graphs in F that are contained by G. 
And uh, so rather than hitting all the vertices as we do in domination, we just want to hit all the F graphs, okay? And in the, in the best possible way. So we use, well, again, we want to use the smallest number of vertices uh, so that um, every F graph present in G is intersected uh, by the close neighborhood of this set of D of vertices. Um, so if you want to focus on the only rather than the close neighborhood, what we're saying is that every F graph is at most sort of, well, is well, I mean, it's it's either intersected by D itself or at most one step away, okay, distance one away from D. Um, has a vertex that is at least at most, okay. Um, if not, if, if it has no vertex in D, it has some vertex that is um, adjacent to a vertex in D. So I repeat, okay, if isolation um, in general for some set of graphs, um, what we want to do, okay, with isolation is to have a set of vertices whose close neighborhood intersects all these F graphs rather than insisting on um, intersecting, hitting all the vertices. Okay, so in fact, for this reason, so this is isolation. Caro and Hansberg also use the um, description, the, 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 the term partial domination, okay, because rather than covering all the vertices, we're covering. Um, these have graphs. Um, so partial domination, but sort of the word we're using for hitting the F graphs is isolation, isolating those graphs. Um, now, a classical result of or in fact classical domination result dating back to 1962 is that the domination number, okay, remember G would be a connected graph and is the number of vertices, okay, the order of G. And uh, so connected graph, and, but G is not a K1 itself, okay? In other words, the number of vertices is at least two. Um, the domination number is at most half N. And well, okay, so I guess you, you're all, you all know this very well, but maybe I should prove this very quickly, okay? This, I guess, yeah, there are several proofs, but like sort of straightforward proof, go, proof goes like this. So I'll, I'll share the whiteboard. Okay, so, Take a largest or a maximal, okay, a, a independent set. So say let I be an independent set of the graph that is maximal. All right. Um, in other words, so we've already seen what independent set is. Um, some people use stable set or whatever, some other term, but um, independent set, again, means that uh, this is a set of vertices of the graph on which you have no edge, okay? So no two vertices here are adjacent. Take one that is maximal. Say you take, you can take it to be of large maximum size straight away. And, uh, and this will be, of course, the remaining set of vertices. So the vertex set of G, sorry, without I, Okay. And the first observation is that both sides, okay, both I and the complement V of G without I are both dominating sets of this graph G. Why? Um, because if you look at I, why is I a dominating set of G here? Um, because um, every vertex in the complement, sorry. If the, the fact that you that it's maximal or say of maximum size means that you cannot add any vertex, any vertex to um to I, right? So so in other words, now first of all, actually, okay, if I is an independent set. Every vertex in I, because actually it's easier to start this way, every vertex in I must be joined to some vertex in here. Why? Because the graph is connected, right? So every vertex in I, um, it's adjacent to any other vertex in I, and therefore it has to be joined to, um, it has to be adjacent to some, some vertex, because the graph is connected, and therefore um, it has to be, it, the edge has to go from I to the complement of I, and therefore, V of G without I 
dominates the whole graph. Why? Because every vertex in I has to be joined, as we said, okay, to some vertex in V of G without I. This is because the graph is connected, right? And therefore, V of G without I is um, is a is a dominating set of the graph. Now, why is I um, a dominating set? Okay, because it's maximal. So um, you cannot add. Okay, we cannot add any other, uh, we cannot shift a vertex from V of G without I to here. Why? Why? Because um, if we do that, okay, we create a set here, I with this added vertex that is not independent, all right? We create, why? Um, because this, and this is, this would be a contradiction because I is a maximal independent set. You cannot add any vertices. Uh, to it without destroying the independence. And therefore, um, that vertex, since you cannot add it to Y, all right, that's because it is adjacent. So let me erase this. Um, okay, another. So we cannot do that. We cannot do that because. Um, okay. We, we cannot do that because this vertex, any vertex you take here, is adjacent to some vertex in I, all right? The reason, so if you pick any vertex in the complement of I, the reason you cannot add it to I is because I is maximal by choice um, of I, and therefore that particular vertex, okay, um, is adjacent to some vertex in I. So that means it is dominated by I. So every vertex in the complement is dominated by I, and therefore I is also a dominating set of G. So both sides are dominating sets, and therefore choose one of, okay, the one of smaller size. And by averaging, of course, it has to be of size at most half of N. They cannot be both greater than N over two, okay, because then you have more, okay, you have, I mean, something greater than N, okay, something greater than N over two, Plus something greater than n over two, and therefore you have more than n vertices. A contradiction, um, and there, so one of them has to be of size. Okay, i or v of g without i, they're both dominating sets. Well, of course, one of them has to be of size at most n over two. So you have some dominating set of size at most n over two. All right, this is um, just one proof of this uh, well-known fact here. Now, um, so. As we have seen, D is a dominating set of G, if and only if G with the close neighborhood of D removed is a graph, is the D graph with no vertices, then called the null graph. Um, now, D is called a vertex edge dominating set of G, or in short, VE dominating set of G, okay, VE standing for vertex edge, of course, if the close neighborhood of D intersects each edge of G, all right? So I repeat, vertex edge dominating if the close neighborhood intersects all the edges of G. And therefore, G without the close neighborhood is a graph with no edges. In other words, it is the empty, it is an empty graph. So this is different from dominating Y because we can have a graph with some vertices here, G minus N of D. So vertex edge dominating, but dominating set. If you remove the close neighborhood, you can have surviving vertices, but no surviving edges. And therefore you have an empty graph. Dominating, you do not even have vertices. Uh, now, the size of a small SVE dominating set of G is denoted by gamma VE. Okay? Uh, of G and for the VE domination number of G, okay, vertex edge domination number of G. Note, of course, that a VE dominating set of G is in fact a K2 isolating set of G. You're, you're intersecting edges, you're saying, okay, you're intersecting every, the, well, all the vertices, the vertex sets of the K2s present, okay, the two cliques present in G. Um, so a dominating set of G and the K2 isolating set of G, okay. They're the same concept. Dominating set is a K2 isolating set and vice versa. So this, well, the vertex edge domination number is in fact the K2 isolation number, iota GK2. And 
Kara and Hansberg, and this is, so they have this paper um, in Philomat, a Serbian journal, 2017. They proved many results there. I will refer to some of them, but actually it's, it's a very varied paper, several results in terms of minimum degree, maximum degree, and, you know, several considerations, a very good paper. And, but sort of, they present this result as, in a sense, like as their prominent result there, and it is important, of course, because sort of the most natural thing to consider is hitting edges, okay, beyond beyond hitting vertices, domination, hitting vertices. How about hitting, insisting on hitting edges rather than vertices? That it's like the next step uh, from domination. Um, that's very natural, and in fact, okay. Well, they prove that if G is not a K2, remember that for Ore we had G is not K1. Here we have something interesting happening. G is not K2 and G is not a five cycle. Very interesting. Um, so two exceptions only. If G is not one of those, then the K2 isolation number or the vertex edge domination number is at most n over three. Um, this was independently proved uh, by Pavel Zielinski uh, from Dask, I believe. Um, okay. And um uh, so um, now something about the extremal graphs very quickly. Um, the graphs that attain the half n domination bound of ore were determined independently by Payan and Schwong, and by and also by Fink, um, Jacobson, James and Roberts, 1985. Okay, this you you'll find a lot more on this on such results, you know, and. Uh, early domination results in this very well-known book, uh, popular book, um, Fundamentals of Domination in Graphs. And uh, very recently, of course, I mean, after this result, so sort of, um, well, I mean, uh, Lemanska, so Magdalena Lemanska, Merce Moro, and Maria Soto Salorio, very recently published this paper in Discrete Mathematics, um, where they sort of conjectured what the extremal graphs for this bound should be, and they partially proved that conjecture. Okay, and but the conjecture has now, um, again, this is very recent work. Okay, published this year. Um, so by Boyer and Goddard, they fully determined. I mean, they proved. Uh, their conjecture, they determined the extreme graphs. Okay, so the graphs that attain this bound and over three. Um, so I'll come to these graphs. Okay, what these graphs, the extreme graphs normally look like. Um, I'll come to this in a minute. Now, so as I said, in their 2017 paper, in their seminal paper, Carl and Hansberg proved several structure results. Equalities, bounds for these isolation, this isolation parameter, um, mostly in terms of the order, the number of vertices of the graph, the maximum degree, or the minimum degree of the graph. They focus primarily, as I said, on the cases where f is k2, okay, basically hitting edges, and also f is k1k. K1k is particularly interesting because if you're destroying the k1ks, what that means, okay, that so if when you remove a KYK, a K1K, what is K1K first of all? Okay, standard notation again. So the graph with one vertex going to K vertices. That's it. Okay, the, the K star we call it, or yeah, K star, or maybe K plus one star, it depends on the others. Um, but K1K here is one vertex, so the bipartite, the complete bipartite graph with a partite set of size one, just one vertex, and, um, and another, the other partite set being of size K. And of course, if you so if you have a K1K isolating set, what does that mean? That in what remains when you remove the closed neighborhood of the K1K isolating set, you have no K1K present. In other words, you have no vertex going to K vertices. And therefore, the maximum degree cannot be K, K or larger. It has to be at most K minus one. So K1K is particularly interesting because when you remove the closed neighborhood, what you get um, of a K1K isolating set, that is what you get is a graph of maximum degree at most K minus one. Um, it's it's a natural thing to consider K1K, of course. Um, and yeah, 
so they also proved other things like um, the established bounds for certain graphs G, namely trees, maximal outer planar graphs, plot free graphs, and grid graphs. And they also pose several problems, and I will refer to some of them and what we've managed to do. Okay, um, so this, these are some of the results that sort of have inspired us, okay, have motivated, motivated us to prove like generalizations mostly of these things. Um, so the first result is precisely the one I've stated, okay, that the K-twice duration number is at most an over three if G is not a K2C5 graph, okay, it's not an F graph where F is K2 or C5. Um, okay, not a K2 or a C5. The second result, so they, they also prove this result, um, which can be proved, you know, in a sort of straightforward, greedy manner, um, that iota gk one k is an over k plus one. Okay, this, I mean, how would you do it? You, you take a vertex, you take the, of well, so if you have a k star present, a k one k present, well, take the vertex going to the k uh, vertices, and remove remove it well remove its close neighborhood so you're down by okay you have removed at least well remove the whole close neighborhood you have at least k um, neighbors and therefore you have removed k plus that vertex okay k plus one at least and you go on like that okay if, see what survives if you have another k one k do the same thing remove it remove the whole k one k basically and of course then eventually okay would have removed at most an over k plus one of these, and you will be left with no k one k finally. Um, because each time you're removing k plus one at least. So that's how that goes. But this bound is not sharp. They proved that okay, for graphs that are not necessarily connected, this holds for graphs that are not necessarily connected, but how does it okay? How would what's the best possible bound for connected graphs then? And I will refer to this, okay. Basically, my conjecture is that it's an all all over k plus three over two. So it's slightly lower than an over k plus one. So, yeah, another result, um, G, if G is a three and G is not k one k, in fact, this particular, okay, not this particular three, k one k, because k one k is a three, of course, um, then the k one k isolation number is at most an over k plus two, okay? So from an over k plus one, we go down to an over k plus two for trees. And for maximal outer planar graphs, okay, assuming then is at least four, the K2 isolation number is an over four. Now, why maximal outer planar graphs? Um, these are of particular, so these are very, very particular graphs, as you know, okay, not only outer planar, but maximal with all sort of all, all, all you cannot add any edge inside, um, inside the, the, the outer cycle or whatever. Um, of the outer planar graph. Um, so very particular graphs, um, but their importance arises from their connection with the, well, Havata's art gallery theory, art gallery theorem, which I refer to, um, and uh, which has you know motivated us to prove a generalization of this, um, and also to prove a result sort of extending the, the, this, the art gallery theorem. Um, I'll come, Back to this. So basically, you you you'll understand why maximal outer planar graphs are you know particular interest. And uh, now, if, so as I said, Karen and Hansberg in their paper they posed a number of problems, um, and some of them quite general in fact. Um, but we were struck by these two particular ones that are, of course, very natural. So these are slightly stronger versions because they pose their. Um, problems uh, for the, the limit superior, limb sop, um, in terms of that kind of thing. Um, but but what we managed to prove doesn't require limb sop as such. Um, and anyway, I mean, so th this these two problems stated this way are just slightly stronger than the, the way they pose them. Um, so let curly C be the set of cycles. Okay, cycles, of course, of length at least three. So the cycle on three vertices, four vertices, five, okay, all cycles of length at least three. Um, and uh, the problem is to determine the smallest constant C such that the cycle, okay, what we call the cycle isolation number. So iota G, C, we want to destroy. Okay, so a set, okay, 
What is a C-isolating set? It's a set of vertices D whose closed neighborhood intersects all the cycles of the graph, um, cycles present in the graph. So, and the problem is to determine smallest constant such that, okay, iota, the cycle isolation number, or the C-isolation number is at most Cn for every connected and vertex graph G. Okay, it makes sense to consider these parameters are additive. Okay, so what's of interest? I mean, we really, it, we really have to consider connected graphs because otherwise, you know, I mean, sort of. That then if you have a, a graph that is not connected, you look at its components and basically the parameter would be the sum of the parameters um, of, of, uh, of, of, of the components. So basically, it makes sense to just look at connected graphs, okay? Um, and the second problem is for k clicks, in fact. Um, determine the smallest real number, see such that the k, k isolation number, okay, so we want to destroy all k clicks in the graph, um, is at most c times n for every connected and vertex graph g. And we managed to prove this result. Um, Forget, I mean, ignore rather this description here. I, I will I will describe what this graph is, BNK here. This definition of a graph BNK, I, I will explain what it is. Uh, and uh, what I managed to prove um, is that if G is not a K3, a triangle, okay, which is a K3 or C3, um, then the cycle isolation number of G is at most an over four. Of course, we take the floor, okay, because this is an integer. So if it's at most an over four, it's actually at most the floor of an over four. And equality holds if G is this particular graph, B and three, okay? So I'll explain what B and K is in general. Okay, so I'll switch to the whiteboard. Um, so I need a thing. Um, um, um. Okay, um, we'd have, say, a path here, but it could be a tree or some connected graph in general. And we put a KK here, KK, and so on. And we just join. Now, you could actually join, okay, this vertex here. So... For every kk, we have a vertex up there. Okay, so I repeat, for every kk down here, we have a vertex up there, and we join them like that. Okay, now, and we would have n over k plus one of these. Okay, and these would be kk's here. Right, and... Uh, why an over k plus one? So, because for every kk we have k vertices here, but we have an additional vertex up here, okay, to which it is attached. Um, as I said, the way it's defined there being k, I actually have the vertex joined to all the vertices here, but you don't have to do that. All that matters is that you have a connection from this vertex to the k click. One is enough, all right? And if you have, so if n does, if k plus one does not divide then, okay, the remainder, put them here, and just do something like that, All right? Um, so that's the graph BNK. And what is the isolation number of this graph? It is an over k plus one. So, sorry, the kk. So suppose I want, I'm considering, okay, uh, a kk isolating set of this particular graph. I want to destroy all the kks. Particularly to destroy the KKs down here, okay, the hanging KKs. Well, I cannot destroy any KK by using a vertex, okay? So, for example, suppose I want to destroy the KK here, okay? I need to use a vertex in KK and that KK itself, or this one above it to destroy, okay? To, to, to sort of... Um, hit at least one of the vertices of that KK, um, and therefore it does not survive in G without the close neighborhood 
of the of the KK isolating set. So for each sort of part here, like this. I need a vertex in there because I cannot reach it from here, for example. You see, I cannot reach this KKA here under consideration from some other vertex anywhere else, certainly not, certainly not from another KK. Um, but one could think of such a vertex here, but no, I just reach that would hit the vertex above the KK, but not that KK itself. So for every such section, if you like, we call it a, I call it a constituent. Um, I need a vertex from okay that that part from KK itself or from up there. So for each part here, I need one vertex from that part in order to destroy all these hanging KKs at least. Um, so and I have an over K plus one of them. All right. Um, I would be using an over K plus one floor and over K plus one vertices. But when I do that, that okay that would be so basically I can take. I can choose, might as well choose the vertices up here. Those, these vertices here destroy all the K-clicks, okay? Because a vertex up here would destroy a vertex, would hit a vertex from the K-click. It will not, okay, when you remove that, you no longer have a K-click there. And therefore, like this, okay, this is a KK isolating set of the graph, but I need at least that many, right? So the isolation number of this graph here is in fact, okay, for this particular graph G here, we have that, all right. Now that's for K click isolation, and actually I still I'm still coming to that, but you can see okay what the bound looks like and over K plus one. But I'm talking about cycle isolation for the time being. And uh, when when K is three, okay, K three is a three cycle, of course. Um so if this thing here, so Bit of patience back to this. Okay, so imagine I have Ks3. Okay, these would be three cycles here. The KKs would be K3s, which are three cycles. And therefore, here I would need, okay, for such a graph G, the three cycles here, having three cycles. Okay, well, I need an over three plus one and over four, as I've explained here, to destroy all the three cycles here. Notice that we're actually trying to destroy all the cycles, not the three cycles only. So we know that we and over four would be required for such a graph, right? So it cannot be better than an over four, but in fact, an over four works, all right? So the cycle isolation number is at most an over four, and as I've explained, okay, the bound is attained by this graph, K is three, okay, B and three. Um, and this solves problem one, all right? C is one fourth. Problem two, problem two was for K clicks, and that has been solved as well. This was work okay with uh, with my PhD student at the time, Kurt Fennec and Pawaton Kaema Wichanorat from Thailand. And uh, our result is that if G is not a KK and if K we, we do not have that K is two and G is a five cycle, as we have seen from Karo Hansberg and Zelensky, um, the KK isolation numbers at most and over K plus one. And the quality holds, as I've explained, if G is that graph B and K that I've, um, that I've uh, defined. And uh, so, yes, I mean, this is therefore infinitely attainable, attainable for every n, really. And uh, so, uh, what shall we say? Yes, I'd like to say that our proof here was different from the proof of Caro and Harnbeck. So basically, we, repro we proved the, also the result, okay, for K is two. Uh, which is the result of current Hansberg and of Zelensky, we used a different argument. Um, they used a breadth-first search, if I believe, if I, if I remember correctly. Um, we used um, uh, an, induction, an, uh, an inductive approach um, that is um, uh, different. And this therefore solves problem to, okay, the C for KK, that constant is one over K plus one. Um, and uh, the case K is one, you see, is the classical bound of area. K is one, um, what, okay, when K is one, remember that the K one isolation number is a domination number. Domination, okay, K is one, put K is one here and you have an over two, which is the result of ORE. And K is two, of course, okay, we've seen this already, an over two plus one and over three, that's CH1, the Karo Hansberg result. And uh, now from K clicks to, um, Regular graphs 
and k chromatic graphs k minus one regular or regularity well i mean at least k minus one so let f not k be this set consisting of k1 k only let f1 k be the set of regular graphs of degree at least k minus one so f1 k consists of all k minus one regular graphs k regular graphs k plus one regular graphs and so on all of those and let f2 k be the set of graphs whose chromatic number is at least k and let f3 k be the union of all these things okay f not k f1 k f2 k um now why these things because kk is k minus one regular okay and a kk every vertex is adjacent to precisely k the k minus one other vertices so k minus one regular um but don't forget okay that here we're, we're considering regular graphs of degree at least k minus one so we're also considering not only considering that precisely k not just precisely k minus one but regularity k minus one or more um and a k click also is K chromatic okay and here we have all graphs of chromatic number at least k um so this set of 1k contains kk in particular and f2k contains kk as well now there is a reason why here i've included f not k okay k1k because basically i i i needed it so okay what have i proved here um again a recent result that if i is zero or one or two or three, okay, notice that three in particular is the union of all the others, um, then unless g is k, k, or k is two and g is the five cycle, then the f i k isolation number is again n over k plus one. So this, of course, generalizes the k, k isolation result, n over k plus one. The bound has remained the same. Now we're destroying many more things. All regular graphs of degree at least k minus one, all the k one k's, all graphs of chromatic number at least k, we're destroying all of those if you take i is three, for example. But even if you take i is one or two, okay, so equality holds if i is one or two or three, and g is b and k, because b and k, okay, if you take, I mean, sort of this bound remains best possible, okay, if i is one or two or three, um, so, sort of, you cannot improve it. Um, and uh, but not i is zero as i told you okay because uh, as i've explained the fact i've proved recently that uh, in fact n over k plus one is not the best possible bound for k1 k um i can say it you know it's a, it's a result that's um, a paper that's under review at the moment um i actually know that it, the best possible bound okay n over k plus one is not the best possible bound for the k1 k is an asian number but it is for these for these large sets here um so this generalizes this result here generalizes both the cycle bound and the k click bound of course why because the k clicks okay as i said the k click is in f1k and then f2k and of course therefore in f3k um but how does it generalize the cycle bound because a cycle is a two regular graphs so is that a regular graph so two regular graph okay um that means regular so degree at least set of regular graphs of degree at least k minus one k minus one would be two okay so cycle um two regular so k minus one is two therefore k is three and if you put k is three here you get an over three plus one and over do an over four we had four cycles um now we have bounds in terms of the number of edges as well so I managed to prove, again, a recent result that has just appeared in the Mediterranean Journal of Mathematics. Um, by the way, these results were basically the K-click result was um, appeared in discrete math. Um, this one, cycle isolation graphs and combinatorics, okay. And this is, now, this is work in terms of the bounds in terms of the number of edges. So again, if I is, Yes, I wanted to say that there was a reason why I included K1K in, in here, okay, for proving the bound. Basically, I needed it in, in the argument. I need, if, if, if sort of the, 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 the proof uh, hinges on including those, well, including K1K. Um, so it's not like, you know, like sort of just to add it. Um, now we have I have this bound in terms of the number of edges. So again, if I is one of those, so one or two or three, so f1k or f2k or f3k, 
um, again, the FYK isolation number is at most M plus one number of edges of G plus one all over K choose two, which is the number of edges of K, of course, plus two. Again, G is not KK, and they also managed to prove, um, establish the extremist structures for this bond, okay, without the floor. Without, with the floor, it would become like really horrible. Um, but as it is here, um, we have these extremist structures. So basically, okay, here I use the term pure MK special graph. So if, if the bound is attained, first of all, K choose two plus two divides M plus one. And the M, a pure MK special graph would be precisely what I've drawn here, okay? So just one edge here, just one edge. So every K click is joined to a vertex up there with just an edge, no re sort of remaining edges there. Um, and that's because of the divisibility. And uh, here you would have this part, a part like that, or a tree in general. Okay, so the graph would be a tree, and for every vertex of the tree, there is a hanging K click and hanging by just one edge. Okay, that's that's what uh, what I call a pure MK special graph here. And um, so basically this bond is attained, okay, if uh, G is like that, or K is two and G is a five cycle, or K is three, I is one or three, okay? So regular graphs or union of the regular graphs and K chromatic graphs, and G is a four cycle. Now if G is MK special, now MK special, pure is when there are no remaining edges, no sort of remainder edges. But if you do have such things, basically, well, you attain the floor of K of the thing there. Um, anyway, so for the case where K for so iota G, so when F I K is just K K, so iota G K K, okay, again, of course, it follows from this result, okay, that's a, this is a special case. So when F I K is K K, it's a special case of this. This bound holds, it is again attained, okay, because it, attained, it is attained by a pure MK special graph. And the K click isolation version of this, the special case that is, this had been proved by um, um, in joint work with again Fennec and Karma which are in 2022. Now recently, uh, Zhang and Wu made, made this interesting conjecture. So, so if the domination number of a graph is one, what does that mean? Okay, that there, there's a vertex dominating uh, all the, all the vertices. In other words, that vertex. Um, every other vertex of the graph is a neighbor of that vertex. So, as you know, the domination number is one. That means, okay, that holds event only if the graph F has a vertex that is adjacent, at least one vertex is adjacent to all the other vertices of F. Um, and Zhang Gendu recently conjectured that if F is a graph, say, on our edges, and its domination number is one, okay? So you have, a, a, as I said, okay? It's a, any graph that has a vertex that dominates all the other vertices, um, adj is adjacent to all the other vertices. Of course, that's automatically connected. Um, then iota GF is at most M, which is the number of edges of G, plus one all over R, the number of edges of F, plus two. Unless G is a copy of F, or F is a tripart and G is a six cycle is a six cycle. And they prove this for the extreme case when where F is K1 K. Right. So in fact, the smallest number of edges you can have. You have precisely one vertex going to K vertices and just that no other edges present on sort of on, on the on the other vertices, on the adjacent vertices. That's one extreme case. So our number of edges is precisely K, of course. Okay, so F K edges only in, in K1 K. The other extreme case of such a graph F is when you have a complete graph, of course, F is KK. And therefore, the number of edges now here would have, okay, so a vertex going to the other K minus one vertices. And we have, what is the number of edges? K choose two. Okay, that is the other extreme case. So one extreme case is K1, K, when you just have those edges used for K dominant, sort of dominating all the other vertices. The other extreme cases where you have all the other edges present, KK. Um, and uh, this conjecture is for anything, you know, those two cases and anything in between. And I have just managed to prove it's, it's a paper archive and of course it's under review now, um, that the conjecture is true and the bound is sharp, it's best possible. Again, this kind of construction 
basically what we do here back to the whiteboard. Okay, so instead of using a KK here, now we have F. Basically the same thing, but instead of a KK, you have F, and here you have an edge, okay, joining a vertex up here to one of the vertices of a copy of F. All right. So same thing, but instead of KK, we have an F. Um, and such a thing attains the bound, in fact. Um, and uh, the, the bound with the floor, however, okay. Um, of course, I mean, it has to be an integer for it to be attained. Now, very quickly, um, I think I'm running out of time, but yes, I'll go through this very quickly. So what else are gallery theorem? What does it say? It says that the smallest number of guards needed to guard a simple polygon with n vertices. So we have a polygon, simple polygon, and vertices, or n corners, and therefore, okay, um, therefore n outer edges. And uh, it's really like a cycle, you know, with, with straight, with straight um, edges. And uh, how many guards do you need to guard such a thing, okay? Or the whole interior. So the guards can see the whole, like together they can see, they can guard the whole interior of the polygon. That's why it's called an art gallery, the art gallery theorem, because imagine you have an art gallery, okay, and you need to put guards in there so that they can together watch the whole, sort of, you know, guard the whole interior. They can see everything and stuff. Um, you need that most and over three guards, and the bound is sharp. And uh, now, what's very interesting is that, you know, Erdos used to say that imagine God has a book in which he sort of records the most beautiful proofs, the most elegant proofs. Um, and uh, 1998, I, Eigner and Ziegler published this book called Precisely Proofs from the Book, um, this kind of imaginary book. And uh, this, so this result was proved by Fisk in 19, gave, Fisk gave another proof, okay? Um, very interesting because what he did was he, he proved that every maximal planar graph is three chromatic, okay? And from that it follows, um, well, the result follows really um, in a very nice way. And this proof by Fisk, so ba basically, okay, because what you do is you convert this polygon to a maximal outer planar graph. So you add edges inside until the, the the graph becomes maximal outer planar. Um, and uh, he proved that okay, such a thing, maximal outer planar graph, is three chromatic. And from that, it follows that um, you, okay, I mean, th this this uh, guarding result follows and over three. And uh, this proof by Fisk was included um, in, in this book, okay, proofs from the book, um, due to its elegance, if you like. And, and uh, so, Okay, let G be an vertex maximal outer planar graph now. And in the proof of the art gallery theorem, what I'll um, establish that the domination number is at most an over three, okay? okay an over three again. Uh, the way he did it was to prove this domination result by so, in a way that also solves this guarding problem. And of course, the bound is sharp. And what we managed to do, okay, uh, what this is work with Karma with Chanorat. Um, is that in general, okay, iota gk1k is at most an over k plus three. And uh, this result, so k10, you see k10 would be just k1, that is the k1 isolation number, domination number, therefore, and this k, it would be this result here. But for k1k in general, we have an over k plus three. So as I said, the case k0 is this result of Vatal here. Um, and the case k is one is, the, the, the result due to Caro and Hansberg, this one here, okay, iota gk2 and over four. And uh, and uh, the thing is that the argument, the argument rather than the result itself, the argument for the theorem also gives the following guarding result. Um, if an art gallery has exactly n corners again, and the, at least one of every k plus one consecutive corners must be visible to at least one guard, okay? So now it's about the corners under the whole interior. And every, at least one of every K plus one consecutive corners must be visible to at least one guard. The number of guards needed is at most an over K plus three, okay? This is a bit of an extension of the art gallery theorem, but okay, it, it basically one uses the exact same argument for the bound here. Now, finally, some problems very quickly, okay? So one of the general problems to consider is precisely this, and this is what we have been doing for in terms of the order, okay, the number of vertices. 
what is the smallest real number C, depending on the family F force, such that the F isolation number is at most that constant times the number of vertices of G, as we've been doing, okay? Some constant times N. For every connected graph G, that is not some exception, okay? That is not a copy of one of a finite number of exceptions. The word finite is very important because you can always keep on going. Uh, of, of particular interest, and this is what we had, for example, the exceptions for K2 isolation were K2 itself and C5, okay? Just two exceptions there. Now, of particular interest are the following cases. F is K1K, as I said. F is CK, a particular case, okay, K fixed. And F is PK, uh, a, a K vertex path. And again, okay, instead of using C of curly of as well, if, if F, so if, if curly F here is just one graph capital F, okay, I can just do C of F rather than C of, well, the set containing F. And uh, last two slides. Um, so I showed that this K, this constant for K1, K is at least one all over K plus three over two. This is what I've been referring to, okay? The, the K1, K isolation result of current transverse. As I said, um, I proved that it's greater, okay, so the best possible bound is greater than or equal to this quantity here, k plus three over two. Um, and I believe actually that is the, the right, the, 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 the okay, it's precisely the value of CK, one k. And then the cycle isolation result gives us that C of C3 is one fourth, Together with um, my PhD, my current PhD students, Carl Bartolo and Dale Shikluna, we proved that for isolating four cycles, we have K, one fifth. Actually, we have nine exceptions there. Um, then I gave a construction that for CK in general, beyond four, we have a different bound. Um, it will definitely be different because I proved that um, this constant would be at least K. Okay, one over k plus one half. These are of the form k plus one. But now we have k plus one half, very interesting phenomenon. The, the whole picture changes beyond five, k is five. Um, and as I said, the, I conjecture that we have equality here, okay, it's precisely this. Four, four parts, very quickly, okay, we have the Karo Hansberg result, C of k2, p2 is k2, we have one there, there is we know. Strong and we'll prove that it's two over seven. I will skip this, okay, I proved a slightly stronger result here that IOTA GP3 is in fact over 7 and minus number of leads over 14, a slight improvement. Um, Zhang and Wu also proved um, that C of P4 is one fourth, but this was also proved by me in a much more general form, okay, I proved that for isolating any triage, and the connected triage graph, three edges or more, three edges or more, you get an over 4 again, okay, one fourth here, so that one fourth applies for isolating any connected graph on, on at least three edges, having at least three edges. This also generalizes the cycle isolation result because every cycle has at least three edges. Um, then Chen and Shu uh, obtained the result for P5 over nine and they conjectured, okay, that in general C of P case two over K plus four, all of these things here, okay, one third to seven, one fourth, these are all of the form two over K over two over K plus four. And that's it. Sorry for taking a bit longer than expected. Okay, thank you so much, Peter, for your nice presentation. Uh, we do not have just, we have, I think, one or two minutes for question or remarks. Is there any question or remark? Uh, Peter, I would like to thank uh, for your nice presentation from isolation of graphs to uh, domination uh, theory very good relationship with, between two, these two parameters and just a question uh, if we have uh, the k2 isolation uh, number of g and also a k2 isolation number of another graph h is there uh, is it possible to say anything about the product k2 K2 uh, isolation free of, for example, corona to graphs, for example? I have to admit, we haven't even gone there yet. Not even thought about mm. that, um, I have to admit. Um, but yes, of course, I mean, as in domination, one can go in that direction. I'd like to say, like, you know, sort of going beyond this, um, uh, that now, because at the beginning I said that isolation now is expanding 
quite rapidly, in fact, um, as, as I thought it would happen. It's like we've discovered a field of treasures, if you like, and a very, very large one. Um, yes, people have been, I, I've noticed that, um, like, Bresher and others have considered game variations. So, of course, oh. uh, um, and total isolation, for example, Henning and others. Mm. So people have been taking, what, so the same kind of, uh, variants they considered for domination, uh, we're seeing them being considered for isolation as well. So without any doubt, yes, that will be considered as well, but definitely not us because we got stuck. You know, there are other problems I didn't mention that we have been solving, and uh, but, you know, time is what it is. And uh, um, I, I can just say that there's a lot more going on, yes. Okay, but okay. unfortunately, we haven't thought about that yet. We well, um, just haven't found the time yet. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, if there is no problem, let to thanks again, uh, Peter. Thank you, Peter.